Today, Precarious plays... Zone of the Enders, the second runner. Just like when we played Zone of the Enders 1, I want to treat this like a rolling critique. I want it to be a little more serious than some of our other playthroughs. Is that going to be fine? Are you okay for another round of that? I had fun last time we did that. I put so much space between them because by the end, I I was sort of exhausted by it. <laughs> but I think that... I think this one might be better. That's, I'm very nervous playing this game, even though it was my intention of playing Zone of the Enders 2 from the start, right? Like, yeah. I've got a story about that, but this is a game that I'm, I'm nervous about the quality of it. I'm not sure if it's actually very good, but I want it to be good. In comparison to its predecessor, or just in general? Just in general. You want it to be good because you really like it? Yes, I think it... I'm worried it might be a game that I I love dearly that is not good. Oh. Like, really. Like, I don't... I wonder if it's... if it's any good. Well, I would like to say not to worry, but we do sort of have a track record on this show. Of no, no, every, things that you like. Every game that we've played that I like, and like things, opinions will change. Mm hmm. And talking to you about games tends to um, expose certain flaws. Yeah. But I still like them at the end. I'll be back soon. Even playing like um, Lost Kingdoms with you, I still like King, uh, Lost Kingdoms. Mm hmm. Well, at least that. So then it will be okay. It'll be fine. No, it might not be. This might be the one that I'm, yeah, you just I'm turn away from. Yeah, I'm worried that I'm going to show it to you, and I'm just going to, it's going to be from dawn to dusk, a constant parade of, ooh, this isn't very good. Well, what makes you think that? You'll see. You'll see. I know you've played a little bit of this one. I had an immense amount of fun. Not enough to finish it, though, I guess, but... So, one thing, I love this introduction. Yeah. I like how they put you in this really basic lev, right? Before they give you access to Jehudi. I love that this cool thing is the really basic lev, too. So, let me try to remember the controls for the lev, because it has, like, a surprising amount of functionality. Or something that I don't think you control again in the game, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's there's like a jump button, and then there's a dash, and you can keep dashing through the air. What happens if you impact on a wall? Can you latch onto the wall? There is an attack button. Okay. Can I attach to the wall like they like they do in the cutscene with that? Hmm. May crash. Yeah, beware. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't look like that's the case. And I don't think the descend button does anything. Dingo, haven't you arrived yet? I, like, it shows Dingo flying with it, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to do that. I don't know if you if you can. Um, anyway. In Zone of the Enders 1, our playthrough, we spent a lot of time trying to decide if the story was any good. It was... If the gameplay reflected the story. Yeah. What's the story here? Well, before we move any further, let me point out a few things. We are, I believe, on a on a moon of Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that Dingo and his friends here, they work as ice miners. Okay. Um, and that might seem preposterous because of, like, the planet that we occupy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ice, hydrogen, and oxygen is... It's, gr it's great. It does so much, right? Right. And if you have interconnected interplanetary systems in place, having a, what amounts to like an entire like small planetoid of water, of frozen water, that's, that's a fantastic resource. Mm -hmm. So right now, Dingo has... 
uh, the lev was backing up. Yeah. The observation crews are goofing off again. Metatron. Mm hmm. That is the name of the resource, right? From the first game? The yes. Okay. Because sometimes I say Metaton. <laughs> no, that's not. That's not right. So he's detecting surface radiation, right? That okay. where it wasn't before. Right. Um, and he was looking for ore, like a vein of it, and instead he found this container. So he's a miner. Right. He's an ice miner, and he has currently, found currently, currently, he's an ice miner. An ice miner. Former what? Not revealed yet. Correct. No, but I don't mind telling you because it happens pretty quickly. Uh, soldiering type. Yes, because of course he would know that this is an orbital frame because he is a soldiering type. What's happening, Angie? Right. What ship did you see? Um. Angie. Something bad happened to Angie. The We're first sham. one. Did the first one have anime cutscenes like this? Uh. I don't think it did. I think they were all. No. They were like pre-rendered. Yeah, they were. Possibly with like upscaled in in engine models, maybe I don't know. They were three dimensional. Right. And I like this better. Yeah. I just do. Um. Well, I think that they're able to convey a lot more expression Damn with the old wrong. technology. From Mars? How can you tell? And I think that anime ditch. really suits and the giant fighting in. robot situation. Yeah. <laughs> so it does not feel, even though the visual style is completely different. It doesn't feel awkward, the transition. This seems totally in line with the gameplay that we just saw walking with the mech up to this silo? It's a shipping container. Yeah. Good morning. Ready for combat um, the tone is very different in this game generally. Mm -hmm. The first one, it was very tight-knit. It happened over a small area. Leo was not a soldier. He was not a very accomplished pilot. He learned pretty quickly. But this is much more whiz-bang-kapow. Dingo is a soldier. Jehudi is finally in the hands of a sh soldier. And this mm -hmm. just... <clears throat> Stunning. Part of me wonders, I'm pretty sure that Hideo Kojima, it feels like he had less to do with the first game than the second one. And yeah. I, I wonder if maybe there was a bit too much interference. Between him and the first one? Yeah, and because I think that someone, I don't, I, it seems like the kind of thing where like he was like, well, what if it was like more more whiz bang kapow like right right and so basically we saw half of his influence in the first one and this one because the first one did well enough what is the they let him this do more with this one do you want me to explain how no i mean it was a i think it was um this is detached i doubt there was a lot of publisher yeah. interference so either time it? yeah like the, he was the producer he was not the director of either game Oh. Yes, Ada, please. Um, and I just want to show you one of these because this is a situation where, like, there's a whole different graphical style for this mm -hmm. that you don't really see anywhere else in the game. Oh. Yeah, it's cool, right? And it's it's on the enemies, too. It, yeah. Maybe it's, it's probably just, like, a, a retexture job. Mm -hmm. But Press it is interesting that they the they bothered to, to modify descend. this um, Press RT VR, VR trainer, dash. right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a story about this as well. Um, I Holding played through the first couple of hours of gameplay in two different versions of this game today. This so I... To we're going to skip this, right? Okay. Um, Can you get into a, a bit of a fight? I don't know if the functions are enabled. Mm. Yeah, they won't. I just um, want to see these figures attack. move around. I just think it's neat. Well, move around and interact with each other. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the they're ghosts. 
the silhouette on Jehudi with all of the power lines visible. Mm-hmm. It raises some questions. You know, it seems like... Let me get a look at the front of Jehudi again. So you have a situation where the chest plate, it's solid. It doesn't have a lot of power running through it. Mm -hmm. So they're almost like veins, but it's weird because there are some larger sections that you think you would think like they wouldn't need to have power running through them either. Yeah. Like on the side of the hip. Yeah. Like if you were armoring a person, right? Right. You would actually probably want to have... When you look at a person um, and where their veins are, the bigger ones are closer to where Jehudi's body is dark because of protective reasons. Mm -hmm. So, like, the inner part of the leg, the abdomen, the inner arm, those are what actually... If we were to translate this, those would be lit up brighter than the outside. So it's like an inverse of what what you see on that model. 